In this video, we're going to take our tread pattern and we're going to make it behave more intelligently. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when we're designing real step ladders, very rarely is a step exactly 12 inches long, 13 inches long, or 14 inches long. Typically, they'll be like 11.592 inches because we have the taper in our front frames that it has to conform to. Because of that, it would be nice if we could just give an overall length, give the maximum size of the tread length that we want, and then have Inventor go and calculate what size to make everything and make everything fit exactly the way we want on the stair. That way I can put this on any number of steps and it's going to come out right every single time. So to do that, we're going to need to go back to our parameters dialog and we're going to need to start by adding a few user parameters. So the first one that we want is we want a parameter that represents the overall tread length that we need to create. Then we need one where we allow the user to define the maximum tread length that they want each one to be. Then we need one that calculates the number of tread instances that we're going to need. And then last but not least, we're going to need a parameter that calculates the X spacing. Now notice our overall tread length, we want to be in inches, our maximum tread length, we want to be in inches, and our X spacing, we want to be in inches. But the number of tread instances needs to be a unitless number. So I can just click right here and I can go to my unitless option, select unitless, and now you can see that we have changed the units of this one parameter to be unitless. Now, let's go ahead and by default, let's say the overall tread length is 12. Let's set our max tread length to one for now. We'll just create any number right here for a second. And what we wanna do right now is we wanna come in and figure out what formula we need to calculate the number of tread instances that are necessary. Well, this really is just going to be our overall tread length divided by the maximum tread length that we want to create. So let's go ahead and do that. Overall tread length divided by our maximum tread length. And right now the number comes out fine because we have 12 and one, but you know, what if this were 12.453? In that case, the number of tread instances would be a number that we don't want because again, we want this to be an integer. So let's go ahead and use the ceiling function and then click end and be sure to put that inside of parentheses. And now when I hit enter, notice that the number becomes an integer. And so it's always gonna round up so that we have the right number of instances in our part. Now for the X spacing, that is going to be the overall tread length divided by the number of tread instances. So let's go ahead and type that in here. Overall tread length divided by our number of tread instances. And now we've made all of the calculations that we need in order to make our part smart. But now what we need to do is we need to come up here and we need to set some of these so that they make sense. So right here for our tread length, we want that to be our X spacing, but then we also wanna subtract a quarter of an inch. The quarter of an inch represents the gap that we have between each of our treads here. For the tread width, we wanna leave that the same. And then our row to offset, we want that to be our X spacing divided by two. We want that to be X spacing divided by two. Then for the number of instances that we have in our patterns here, you can see this is our row two instance. So we want that to be the number of tread instances minus one. And we want our first row to be the number of tread instances. Then last but not least, 
we want this to be our X spacing. And we want the spacing in our other pattern to also be X spacing as well. Now that we have all of the parameters set up the way that we want, notice that if I click done, let's go ahead and test this to make sure that it works properly. We'll scroll down here. This time, let's make our maximum tread length 0.75. Notice that our treads update, they become shorter. Let's say we want this to be 14 inches long. You can see it updates to be 14 inches long. If we update our tread length to be 1.25, it updates. And notice that everything is working exactly the way that we want it to work. So now what we want to do is let's go ahead and let's save this file. And now let's go ahead and export this and see how it works on our tread step. Let's go to our manage menu, come over to our extract I feature. Just like before, we're going to select sketch one all the way through rectangular pattern two. We're just going to go ahead and set all of the defaults and we'll name this our step tread part three. It's okay to save it outside of the active project. And now when we go to our pad step and we insert it, we're going to be able to see how this works intelligently. So we're going to pick the top plane just like we did before. Let's move it into position where we want that to be. And then that time I forgot to edit the sketch, but it's not a problem. You can always go here and edit the sketch later. And we'll go ahead and line this up exactly where we want it to be. And now you can see it gives us our original pattern. But notice that if I come up here and we change our overall pattern length, let's say to 15 inches, it still has it so that it can go off the part. So what we want to do is we want to tie this overall tread length to our pad length. So let's just go ahead and make this equal to our pad length. And now notice that no matter how big I make my part, my tread always comes out perfect the way that I want it. If I go in here and we want to change the maximum length, we can do that as well. And it's always going to update everything to make sure that we have the exact tread that we want for every step that we create.